apologies for absence and then apologies from Councillor Rudkin. Item 2, minutes of the previous meeting. Can we read those as a true record? Agreed. Thank you. Item 3, to confirm or vary the order of business. I'm not proposing to change the order of business. Item 4, are there any declarations of interest? No. no. Okay. Then move on to item 5, area committees, new initiatives. Councillor Leader. Thank you. Um, okay, so uh, over a year and a half into the life of area committees. I think they had a good start, um, but there is uh, more to do um, to continually improve them. Um, the vision for area committees is really to make sure they are, are taking a proactive and strategic role in shaping their local areas rather than being reactive and, and ad hoc. Um, they're already doing that and this paper aims to extend that in a number of ways. Um, the majority of the content is in Appendix 1, which is the revised terms of reference for the area committees. I'll just flag up a few highlights briefly here. Um, one, um, county councillors will now be co-opted onto area committees but without voting rights. Um, hopefully that will lead to more sharing of budgets between um, county councillors and borough councillors to make um, two pots of money go further and also provide the public with a better service. Um, there is um, initiatives in the report for better action plans for area committees, um, setting more specific, measurable, realistic um, targets which will be reviewed on an annual basis. The idea behind this is to ensure that area committees perhaps focus on doing a small number of things really well um, rather than adopting a, a scattered approach. Um, there's some more devolved powers for area committees in here. Um, I think the highlight for me is um, how section 106 obligations and how those are discharged or, or obligations under the community infrastructure levy. Um, area committees will take a much bigger role in, in deciding um, how those take place. Uh, there's provision for a new Making a Difference budget um, in there which ensures that area committees can take um, action to spend money between meetings, um, up to 10% of their total budget, um, and also uh, various um, initiatives officers will undertake to share details of organisations that area committees might be able to partner with um, in terms of match funding. So again, the idea of partnering with other public sector organisations or the private sector um, to make our money go further. Um, so, in summary, more powers, more strategic and more partnership. Um, that I'll leave the recommendations 14.1 to 14.4. And I've just got one um, slight amendment that needs to make the report to be flagged up with me. In Appendix 1 on page 15, the North East Area Committee and the wards which comprise it, and the North West Area Committee and the wards which comprise it, are the wrong way round, so they need to be swapped. Other than that, I'd like to read the recommendation. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments? I mean, I, this is, I think, a useful set of extensions to the to the role and powers of the various committees. Uh, they are, I think, they are starting to bed in now and are starting to uh, to mm -hmm. take some useful work. At the um, I think the work that we've personally from my own from my own area committee in South West, the work that we've done around uh, around giving people a voice on the uh, on the wind turbines particularly useful, uh, although the, on the two meetings that we held, the first was uh, was uh, much better attended than the, <laughs> the second, uh, but I think it was a, a, useful, um, a useful venue for, uh, for members of the public in Ipswich to be able to discuss those, uh, from what I understand from area chairs. In other areas, that has been replicated across the town. So, uh, with that, the recommendations at 14, can we agree those? And obviously there will be further discussion at Council next week. Thank you. We move on to item 6, non-statutory consultation policy and guidance. Council leader again. Okay, um, the Council has uh, a policy for non-statutory consultations, i.e. consultations that fall outside planning and licensing. Um, we've had that policy since 2007 and really it's thought it's time for for a refresh of the policy and um, to improve it in various ways and to take account of the fact that there's been a number of new developments at the council um, since the policy was introduced, not least uh, running on for the last report, the introduction of area committees, which obviously perform an important consultative function. Um, 
just run through uh, the main reasons for the overhaul of the old policy. Um, sometimes in the past we, we perhaps missed some opportunities to combine consultations for maximum effect. Um, we haven't always done as well as, as perhaps um, we could do under the old policy in terms of sharing data we've gathered from, from consultations throughout the organisations and various other things like that. I think the key um, document in this report is Appendix A, which is in Appendix 1, which is guidance for, for officers. This is an inward facing uh, document to ensure that all steps are taken to ensure we're conducting our, our consultations with the best value and to the maximum effect in terms of getting the views from the public, which will ensure we make some better policy. Um, so with that, I move recommendations 13.1 and 13.2. Uh, Chair, just a, a comment. I mean, this is obviously very important, isn't it, how we communicate and consult um, with members of the public in the town. And uh, I think I'd like to um, suggest one uh, amendment, not, not to the recommendations, but to the checklist on page 17. Uh, I, I think this is the bit of this policy that will be... Um, of most practical use, the one officers should be turning to um, to look at when they um, plan to consult. And I think the really key thing, or a really key thing, is very clear, simple English. Clear, simple, plain English. Which it's you know I I, I think all of us do this. We write in the mode of language that. Uh, we're used to doing, and so for highway officers, for example, that will be a very particular jargon, won't it? And I think standing back for that, from that, so that you're you're thinking, would I understand it if I was somebody who wasn't reading this stuff every day? It's really crucial. So I think at bullet point three, where it says identify consultation t consultation <coughs> team and design the consultation, what needs to go in there is a check that it is really simple and straightforward. Thank you, Councillor I wonder why you picked on Hollywood. Councillor Lee, did you want to respond to that? Yeah, I think it's absolutely essential. Clearly, this report is all about getting the very best we can out of the people of this town in terms of the knowledge they have about their communities. That doesn't sound too much like local government speak in itself. <laughs> um, so I fully agree um, that we should make every effort to make sure consultation is done in plain English. So thanks, man. You know, in the dim distant past, when, when I first got on the council, and I think uh, council smart remembers this as well, the, um, there used to be something called a crystal mark that you could get for, mm. for plain English. I don't, know what, mm. I don't know what happened to that. Um, but whatever process we had to go through to ensure that, that documents and in particular consultations were in language that, that all members of the public could understand. But I think it's well worth reviving uh, or reviewing what that process was. Anything else on the report? So with that, uh, just with that comment, can we read the recommendations? Agreed. Thank, thank you. And if, and if we move on to item 7, annual housing rent increases. Councillor uh, Moles. Thank you, Chair. Chair, the, the, the recommendation here at, at paragraph 13, which I propose, is that the rent increase from April this year um, should be at 5.5%. That works out at about £4.40 per week on average for our tenants, um, be the rate that we set. As the report quite clearly um, sets out, that, that level of increase is in line with the um, government's, excuse me, government's guideline figure for rent restructuring, which um, came in a number of years ago. Aspect, but also um, in that recommendation, refer to increases for sheltered housing service charges and rents for council garages. They're detailed in the appendices, and therefore the recommendations cover all of those. Chair, yeah, apart from um, being in line with the government's guideline figure, um, the proposed increase is, uh, is anticipated in the housing business plan, which came into effect from 
2012. So we are only now at the uh, in the early stages of this. What we and, and that business plan covers a period of, of 30, some 30 years. Obviously, what rent levels um, are um, included in, for next year, 14, 15, will have an effect on um, other other things. So, um, although I hate the jargon as much as Councillor Jones, in the jargon, it wipes its face. Now, I, I keep a note of all these awful jargon terms, and wipe its face is one of the worst, I find. So I only say that in, in view of what Councillor Jones said. That's the kind of thing I think to be avoided. You won't find it in this report. Um, so I, I'd like to recommend those. Um, I, I could and would like in some respects to say more, but, but this will be going to Council next week. Um, there may be an opportunity for us to add to that at that time. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Blood, do you wish to add anything to the report? Just for information, uh, Councillor Moles mentioned the £4.40 average increase, just to say that for a typical uh, rent that uh, now would work out at £84.11. Thank you. 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 So obviously that this is another report that will be going to, to full council next week where all councillors will have an opportunity to debate it, uh, but can we agree to move this on to council next week? Agreed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Then we move on to item 8. Um, which is Bader Close, tenure of new council village properties. Thank you, Chair. This is um, report um, number eight, and I'd like to move the recommendations in, in that report. And the recommendation is that um, all of these properties um, be built for council ownership for rent and rent at social rents. Um, not all council rents are at social rents. We have none in Ipswich which are not at social rents. That is the recommendation. This again is a, is a report that um, sets out, I, I think fairly clearly, um, how we've arrived at this decision. There's a number of advantages and disadvantages set out in there about various tenures because when we um, embarked upon our um, building program, um, and it's, you know, this, is, this, this is the first major development of that program, um, but not the, not the last one, um, we did say that we would look at um, each side on, on its merits. One thing that we do have to take into account when deciding um, whether to have uh, properties all for social rent, and an important one of course, is that Whereas under planning policies, we do aim to achieve a certain percentage of affordable housing on all development sites, we don't always succeed for one reason or another um, to, uh, to, to do that, which means that that increases the pressure um, on um, the demand on us for social housing. So that's one aspect. There are other aspects as well. Um, the right to buy doesn't help so far as... Um, the social housing stock is concerned, and so that is another um, reason why we need to consider very carefully um, social rent. That doesn't mean to say that every prop every single property that the, that the council builds in the future will be for social rent, but it does mean, if we accept this recommendation, and I hope we will, that all of these properties um, will be um, on that basis, and therefore I will move the recommendation at paragraph 11. Are there any comments or questions? Councillor Jones. Uh, Chair, just um, one point uh, in support of this. Uh, under 3.88 and in the diagram on page uh, 73, we can see um, how dramatically uh, our affordable housing numbers fell after the crash when there was you know, very little uh, house building going on for us to get get our uh, affordable housing number uh, from <coughs> private developments and we've got this target of 205 per year and you can see that if we get a beta close 108 we're you know we're doing uh, very well at a point where because I understand from changes in central government funding uh, that has again plummeted. Uh, in 2012-13. So this is uh, very good uh, news. And um, please to support. 
Thank you. I, I think this is the right decision for Bay to close. Uh, you know, Councillor Jones drew attention to the graph in paragraph 3.8, which shows uh, the, how the provision of affordable housing has tailed off. I think there was, uh, there was certainly a reliance prior to 2008 on private sector developments um, to do the heavy lifting on affordable housing by section 106 agreements. Given that that private sector uh, building has uh, has tailed off, and the big cuts to uh, to housing associations in, in their grants as well, it shows that currently at the moment, uh, if we want any affordable housing provision in Ipswich, it is probably going to be the council that's going to have to deliver it. So I think I think certainly for Bader Close, this is absolutely the right decision to make. Obviously, uh, with the with the future sites that we've already identified, uh, Ulster Avenue, Bradford Road, Reddings Wood, UBW, which will be coming on site, we will be making a similar decision uh, on the ten mix of those of those sites as we as we go forward. And, and it may be a different decision from the one that we've made tonight. Um, but each site will be taken on its merits. So can we agree the recommendations at paragraph eleven? Thank you. Move on to item nine, which I'll take uh, in Councillor Ruckin's absence. The Holywell's Park Regeneration Main Contract Procurement. Uh, very important report, a very welcome report. Uh, committee will, reckon, will um, recall that we did award a minor contract uh, late last year for the desilting works of the ponds, the, the iconic ponds in Holy Oils Park, and that work is uh, is being undertaken as we speak. Uh, we have been looking to see whether there's any interesting objects have been dredged out. I, sadly, I don't think that we've identified quite as much of interest as we did in, uh, in Christchurch Park, um, but anything that we discover will be uh, put on display. Um, there are other things already going on. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I and a number of councillors went to the unveiling of the community portrait at the uh, Gainsborough painting of, of the Hogarth's Ponds, which is absolutely fantastic. I recommend anybody seeing, seeing that. Um, and they've, done a, they've done a great job on it. And I was very interested to hear that we think we may have identified the site that Gainsborough sat at to paint that portrait. Um, and we'll be looking to see whether we could do something in the park there so that people could sit and paint it themselves should they wish to. Uh, but what we're, what we're agreeing tonight is the contract for the main body of the works, which is identified in paragraph 2.3, uh, the uh, restoring the heritage landscape, including, uh, including the ponds, uh, renovating the, the stable blocks so that we get the education centre, so the cafe, the visitor toilets, and so forth, uh, restoring the orangery as well, so which has been bordered uh, timber, I suppose, uh, for as long as as long as I can remember. Uh, and a smaller item, uh, but one that I know uh, is very important to to parents who use uh, Christchurch Park, uh, Holywell's Park, uh, is the uh, provision of a toilet block near the play area. I know that's gone down very well. Um, so just uh, again to. Uh, to highlight in paragraph 2.3 the time scale for this, uh, if we uh, give agreement to award uh, to award this contract tonight, uh, then work will hopefully start during March uh, and be completed by the end of the year. Um, we have uh, we have Miss Mole, Miss Burton here. Um, do you wish to add anything at this stage? No, thanks, uh, Chair. That's, that's, that's a very good summary. And um, just to note that obviously, uh, as these works continue, we'll continue to keep community informed of uh, what's happening and why. Are there any questions or comments on the report? No, um, it's, it is one of these ones where we've we've been discussing it for a long time, and it's this is I think this is the report that finally puts it into practice. Um, so we've come to uh, it's come come. Uh, for for the for the executive is probably the end of the end of the road for us, but uh, for the officers who and the contractor who are doing this, it's obviously the start of the hard work. But um, by the end of the year, I think we will, you know, Holy Wells Park will be will be restored to the to the state that we all want it to be. And already very proud of it as a park, but I think we'll be even prouder 
how this work has been completed. So, can we agree the recommendation at paragraph 10? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you very much. And then move on to item 10, uh, CCCB maintenance contract, Councillor McCartney. Thanks, Chair. This is a replacement uh, contract for the existing contract. Uh, the council have been to tender for this, and eight suppliers were invited to tender and submitted a response. The response has been scored both for financial and technical ability. Uh, the, the technical ability are a range of methodologies and responses that are uh, useful within the Ipswich Borough Council CCTV system. And uh, we have chosen uh, supplier eight as well as one of the contract. Unfortunately, it's not the cheapest one uh, because obviously we, we have to keep money foremost in our mind. But the winning bid scored higher than the technical ability. And clearly, the CCTV system is a key tool in protecting the public in the middle of time. And so I do feel it is worth paying the extra money. It is a modest amount, and the amounts are in section 9. And you'll see again, the contract is of course fixed for, for uh, three years plus an option on four, so it's a long term into the future. But perhaps, um, as this is one of the first contracts we've seen where the price has gone up, it's maybe a sign of the time. Anyway, I'd like to move that uh, the recommendation in section 19. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments? No, fairly straightforward reports. Mm -hmm. uh, can we agree the recommendation in 13? Okay. Thank you. Um, then we move on to item 11. Uh, can we vote to exclude members of the public so that we can discuss items of commercial confidentiality? Agreed.